MRI is one of the most important diagnostic imaging techniques in the hospital, but it's incredibly expensive. And so for much of the world, it's simply not available. So could we design a very cheap, very sustainable, and very accessible MRI system for the developing world? That's the topic of this talk. My name is Andrew Webb. I'm a professor of MRI physics in the Department of Radiology here at the Leiden University Medical Center. And the title of the talk is A Portable and Affordable MRI System, Science Fiction. So let's imagine we go back in time uh, to that of Boerhaave here in Leiden. And if you're a clinician, you have no way of seeing inside a body of a patient. What's going on? The only option then is surgery to cut into the patient. And this has been the way for thousands of years. And then everything changes. In 1896, almost exactly 125 years ago, this person, Willem Konrad Röntgen, working in Unterfranken, the University of Würzburg, discovers something he's not quite sure what they are, but he calls them x-rays. And he takes an image, and since he's not sure if these things are dangerous or not, of course the first person he images is his wife, and he gives us this, the first non-invasive image of the human body, looking inside the human body. And then during the 1900s, many new imaging technologies evolve. Uh, and these ones, if you look at the early parts of these, these are all very clunky pieces of equipment and they're giving us relatively coarse images. But even so, this allows us to look inside the human body and it changes how we do medicine. And in my own area of MRI, the first scanner in the Netherlands here, uh, 40 years ago, delivered to the LUMC, also looking uh, quite clunky and giving images here which look you know, very coarse resolution and grainy, but you can still start to see inside the brain of the patient. And if we look today at the scanners at the LUMC, we see very expensive, very sophisticated scanners giving us really beautiful, beautiful images uh, inside the brain. But, a favorite Dutch word, ma, we have to think about what has not changed. And what has not changed in MRI is the fact that it's incredibly expensive and it's very, very inaccessible to much of the world because of that. And if we look at why, it's not just the cost. So the cost is a lot, one or two million euros. But we have to think we have to make the system work inside a shielded room. We have to have high power, cooling water, very expensive. We have to have a contract to fix this thing every year. That's very expensive. And we have very, very trained technicians who also add to the cost. So why, even in the Netherlands, do we need to think about more affordable healthcare? Well, if we look at projections here, within the EU, we have almost 3% growth as a function of GDP, but the Netherlands is projected to be almost six. So we start to get spiraling healthcare costs. And let's think a little bit further outside the Netherlands. If we look at the world as a whole, more than 70% of the world has no access to MRI whatsoever. And this was the starting point of us thinking about trying to develop more cheap and accessible systems. We've been working with a group in sub-Saharan Africa in Uganda on the subject of pediatric hydrocephalus. So this is Vaterhoft, water on the brain in kids. And you can see it's an easy thing to image if you've got an MRI because you're just looking at the fluid inside. Is there blood there? Have you put in a shunt? Has the fluid gone? Has the fluid not gone? But of course there is no MRI in Uganda. So could we build a low cost system, 20 or, or 30,000 euros, which is sustainable and portable, it could be used in Uganda. So could we make it 1% of the cost and in addition, not to be housed in a hospital like the LUMC here, but rather to be portable so it could be taken from village to village. And if we look at the challenges, we have to say, what do we need currently? Well, we've got to cut the cost, right, by 99%. So this is not a simple cost cut. We have to make sure that there are no maintenance costs. So if something breaks, it has to be repairable. We can't have something where the temperature is nicely controlled and we have power that runs all the time. So this thing has to be very robust. And finally, we've got to make it very, very simple to run. And we have to look at how do you design things sustainably. Here in the Netherlands is probably the most sustainable cell phone. 
Uh, and if we look at why is it sustainable, it's easy to repair, it's always upgradable, and ultimately you can recycle those components. And so those are the things that we're going to try and build into our design. So we design our magnet from very, very simple, very cheap magnets here. These are similar to the ones that are holding things up on your fridge, a little bit stronger than that. But we use thousands and thousands of these. And we put them in certain configurations, which again, mathematically is quite complicated, which I won't bore you with. But we get this so that we get a perfectly uniform magnetic field. And we use these very small magnets so that they're safe. There's no danger in them uh, coming together with uh, strong forces. And that means that's important for local production. So here's the magnet that we produce. So not a million euros, but 10,000 euros and not one ton, but 70 kilos, something that could be carried by a couple of people or maybe even put in a back feeds. 25 centimeter diameter means that we can scan children's heads. Lots of other equipment goes into an MRI system, of course, and all of these components we've designed so that they can be put on the 3D printer. And a key part of this in terms of sustainability is that everything is open source. So all the parts, all of the designs are available for people so they can do it themselves or they can repair things easily. And this is to keep in with the general US sustainable development goals. So here's the whole setup that we've put together. You can see it fits on a table, it's not inside a particular room, and it just plugs into the wall. And what kind of images do we get out? Well, they're certainly not as good as the 2 million euro based system. But if you look at these, you can see that to look at hydrocephalus, to look at fluid, these are certainly good enough. And we can even separate out the white matter and the gray matter in the brain. And this is a key part of a project we're running with the Gates Foundation in terms of looking at pediatric brain development in developing countries uh, and how that is affected by things like malnutrition and countermeasures to that. And we can also image within the forearm or the leg, we can look at the muscle and the lipid, the fat around that, and of course, this is a very non-invasive way of looking at nutritional deficits, malnutrition, and again, how the programs that are being set up to try and counteract that are actually working. One of the additional factors that is nice about these very low field MRI systems is that normally if you've got a metallic implant or you have a shrapnel wound through a war zone, you can't have an MRI. But we can do that. So if you look at your 1.5 or 3 Tesla, which are the standard MRI systems, the image is destroyed by any of these metallic implants. This 50 milli Tesla system, much weaker at the top there, you see there's no such artifacts. So if we look at the advantages of our low field, very cheap, no sighting costs. Patients who couldn't have an MRI can now have one. And if you've ever had an MRI, you know how loud that is this system is essentially silent. So what are we doing over the next few years? Well, within the Netherlands, we're going to be developing with our clinical colleagues here at the LUMC, new ways of putting MRI to, to use. So maybe in the intensive care unit, maybe in the emergency department, and also following up with uh, pediatric development. And then in the developing world, we're working, as I mentioned, with the Gates Foundation and also a company called Hyperfine, who also makes these kind of systems. And the idea here then is to look at infant brain injury uh, in many, many different countries, particularly concentrating uh, on Africa, using this kind of system that can really be wheeled up to the bed of the patients. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. And I've hopefully uh, given you something to think about in terms of using our new technology to help in cheaper and simpler and more accessible and sustainable healthcare.